All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming tonight. Uh, my name is P.K. Kugler. I am the uh, uh, managing partner, founder of Wasabi Venture Stables. And uh, uh, I want to thank everybody for joining. Tonight, uh, we have uh, a meet uh, the trainer session with one of our trainers and one of our newer trainers, um, really just, uh, although we've known Jason for, for a couple of years, uh, really first time had horses with him officially uh, was this year at Oakland. And uh, uh, he's an exciting young trainer. You, and it's good that you're still young, Jason, by the way. Um, and uh, so and we're, uh, we're excited that we'll get to spend some time with him tonight and you'll get to, uh, you'll get to know him. Uh, just a couple uh, housekeeping things. All of you are on mute. Um, for those of you who are logged in via the Slack app, if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to use the chat functionality below. I will I will work the uh, questions in as they they come up for you. So so don't hesitate to to drop questions anytime you uh, you want in there, and uh, I will work them in. And um, with that, uh, let's. Uh, 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 oh, I, I said Slack. Um, I just got a notification from Michelle that I meant Zoom, not Slack. If you if you use the chat function in Zoom, um, then I will uh, I'll be more than happy to work those questions in. So I'm trying not to pay attention to Slack for a change. So with all of that said, let me uh, once again re-welcome Jason Barkley. And Jason, why don't you just take a uh, you know two three minutes and tell your background, how you got to be a trainer, what your story is. Um, okay, well, um, I grew up training. I mean, I grew up in horse racing. Uh, my dad trains still. Uh, my grandfather trained. My other grandfather owned for my other grandfather. That's how my parents met. And, um, you know, I went to University of Louisville. So um, for the equine degree, I uh, graduated from there. Uh, kind of used that to catapult myself into some good contacts and uh, took my first assistant job out of there with Nick Zito. Uh, went on to work for some uh, bigger names. Uh, my last assistant job was with Wesley Ward. Uh, had uh, Never went to Ascot, but had hands on the horses that went there prior to them going. And, you know, just kind of used that as my last stepping stone to kind of get get my hands on the uh, two-year-olds and uh, some better horses and then go from there. And then we just kind of jumped in feet first and now we're rolling along, uh, you know, 20 horses strong and trying to, you know, just pick up more as we go. And Jason, how, when, when did you hang out your own uh, license? When, when were you uh, with, out of, from Wesley Ward? About three years ago, almost to the day. Um, I, my last day was Oaks day three years ago. Gotcha. So, okay. okay. And so, and, uh, you, you went to Louisville, but you, you are a Kentucky kid, right? You grew up in Kentucky. Uh, Indiana, Southern Indiana. Southern Indiana. Ellis. Yeah. I mean, right there on the border of, uh, at Ellis. So right there, you know, 10 minutes from Henderson, Kentucky. So pretty much, I mean, say a little bit of both. Yep, yep. So uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, where you, what your circuit is currently. And I know that COVID is kind of full of wrench. <laughs> yeah. But, but in your ideal um, plans at this point, what, what would be the normal circuit that you're, you're planning to work? Currently for me, it's just Kentucky within Oakland in the winter. Um, and then hopefully this year, depending on what Turfway does and what Churchill does with Turfway, might leave a handful up here um just kind of with oakland not having a turf horse it gives you the poly track option for some turf horses if you have them and if you need it um and then ideally next year uh which was the plan this year was to go to Monmouth, which then turned into maybe go to canterbury which then turned into just take everything to kentucky and here we are but uh you know ideally we can branch out to another smaller circuit to try to get away from Kentucky a little bit and be split and just give you some more options and, uh, and place, you know, and places to place some horses that can't win necessarily win in Kentucky. But right now, you know, we can ship to Indiana, Ohio, 
Uh, if Chicago opens, we'll be able to ship up there. Uh, so we kind of have a lot of options sitting in Kentucky. So um, uh, question uh, that came in, and I think it's a good question kind of segue, uh, is – uh, how did I get to know you, Jason? So the the it's like many things. It's funny a little bit. Um, there's two connections there. One, the power of social media. Um, uh, Jason, if you don't follow him on Twitter, you should. Um, he has a really strong following, does a really great job of communicating on uh, Twitter as well. So um, I had known of Jason um, almost as soon as he hung out at Shingle, actually. Um, uh, so, uh, but, uh, we, we communicated that way and how I really got to connect with Jason was that Jesse Cruz, our, uh, our trainer, uh, that we, that we've been with for a couple of years, Jesse was, uh, Jason and his fiance's roommate last year at Oakland. So they all, th the three of them were sharing a house and that's how I got to know Jason at Oaklawn last year and spent some time with him. And when we came to Oaklawn this year, um, knew we were going to spend more time and have some horses with him. So that's, that's how we got connected. And I spent a lot of time until I wasn't allowed to spend time with him uh, on the backstretch this year. And, uh, uh, but uh, that's, that's how we got connected. And so with that segue, Jason, how, talk to me about how many owners you currently have. What's the makeup of your, your owner group? You know, um, give a little um, bit of that. I'd say I have a fair amount of owners for having 20. I mean, for having only, when you say only 20 horses, it's a good number. But I mean, there's guys that have 50 and 60 horses that probably have less owners than I do. Uh, a lot of my guys have one or two horses. Some of my people are one guy that has a couple horses that he owns and um then there's groups like you uh franklin have equine you know we have a syndicate we kind of have horses together i uh, have horses on and off for 10 strike which is another big group um so it's kind of spread around to you know i'm pretty much open to any i'll listen to anybody and then you know if it's seems worthwhile we'll take it on and see what we can do with it um but you know, it's for me, it's about people that, you know, enjoy the sport and enjoy what we do and kind of have fun with it, um, along with wanting to be competitive. Yep. Is there, is there a particular, um, uh, do you think of yourself, some trainers think of themselves as, as claiming trainers. Some of them, some people think of themselves as, you know, two-year-old type of trainers. Do you, at this point in your career, do you think of yourself in one of those buckets or not, or are you you, you kind of doing a little bit of both? Uh, I mean, I'm doing a little bit of both, but I'm doing more claiming than anything, um, just because the opportunities aren't haven't been there otherwise. But I really like claiming. I grew up. I mean, we were, all we did was claim horses. We didn't have young horses, uh, so claiming to me is fun. I like the challenge of it. I like the possibility of you know, getting out there and, you know, um, trying to make, you know, claim some horses, make them better, do some different things with them, uh, find their niche and just kind of do that. And then, I mean, for me, the babies are fun. I mean, we've had, I've had a couple of good success stories with babies so far, uh, with a few that I've had, I've got a few that'll probably be running here in a few weeks at Churchill. So, I mean, we're getting down the path of kind of being, you know, a 25, 75 split, Rather than when I started, I was just pretty much always just claiming horses and trying to build up that way. Yep. Do you, do you, if in the perfect world, would you, would you want to be in one bucket or the other? I know, you know, business necessity says that you're kind of both. Is there something in your blood one way or the other that you would prefer? Uh, I mean, if you made me choose, I just assume claim horses all day, every day. Just someone, you know, put a bunch of money in the account and let's get to work and see what we can do. Um, you know, I just, I think that's, that's a lot of fun for me. I mean, I know the upside's not always there and there's a lot of work that goes into it, but I mean, I'll sit here tonight when we're done with this and probably look at Saturday for claims anyway. Uh, it's just kind of what I like to do. So if I had to pick, that's what I would pick. But, uh, you know, I'm open to, you know, be diverse and be a little bit of both. Yep. 
what's if you could if you could run in one race not named the Kentucky Derby um, anywhere, um, what, what race would you ideally love to be in? What's what's your dream win taking the Kentucky Derby out of here? Um, I guess that's a tough one. Yeah. Probably like the run happy at Saratoga, mm-hmm. the old Kings Bishop. Oh, it was a lot of fun. I when I worked for Zito, we had we ran two in there. We ran second, got beat ahead. So that was fun. It was still the Kings Bishop then. I don't know. I just I like sprints. So if I had to pick something, I'd probably pick that race. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's uh by the way, everything is named the Run Happy now. Yes. Um, so yes. it doesn't it doesn't really matter what it is, it's called the Run Happy. Is correct. Um, Mattress Mac is, uh, it literally bought everything that can have a naming right in the whole world. Um, as a matter of fact. So, um, if you, uh, you talked about sprints, that you like sprints. It, what is your favorite race to enter a horse into? Do you have a, do you have a type of race that's? Six very long sprint, just speed horse. Just yeah. let me, let me go. Like yeah, I, I, my my personal favorite. Give me a turf sprint all day. I would I watch. I, I I love turf sprints. I would do I turf hate, sprints all day. I hate turf sprints. <laughs> so passion. yeah, I understand. I understand. Hey, so um, talk to me a little bit about what your training philosophy is. If you were, if you, if, if somebody walked into your barn, a brand new owner and said, how do you, how do you think about training? What, what's your answer to that? I mean, I think you have to look at every horse separately. I think a lot of guys, um, you know, a lot of guys, they, you know, it's just a system to them. You know, they don't, every horse is the same and they're going to make it or they're not going to make it. Uh, when you're claiming, when you don't have the numbers that you can just say, oh, well, if he doesn't make it, that's fine. Then, uh, you know, you have to look at them all a little specifically, do a little bit different with each horse. Um, I mean, some horses, they fit a system, they're going to train and they're going to be fine regardless. And, you know, you can, they're kind of on autopilot. But you just going to have to tackle every horse differently. Um, some horses have specific needs. Some horses are easy. Uh, so you just... For me, it's my philosophy would be, you know, they're individuals, so you have to treat them like individuals. Mm-hmm. Do you, a uh, question that came in from the group, do you own any of the horses you train? Um, if so, you know, kind of what percentage of the horses do you own? Um, I have two horses that I own half of, uh, well, 45% of one, because Wasabi owns 5% of one <laughs> uh, still. Because I haven't changed that yet. Um, but, yeah, I have half of Bali's game and half of uh, Horse Macho Madness that we claimed last year. And then he got injured, so I haven't run him yet. But um, he'll be ready to run this summer. And Molly, I mean, she's kind of – I mean, she's a horse every fourth or fifth start. She'll, she'll jump up and win, and she'll pick up checks along the way. Uh, it's kind of a thing I – claimed her with a guy when I was I had six or seven horses and uh we just she's never been claimed off of us so we keep running her and it was just you know a guy wanted me to take half and I kind of needed horses so I jumped in and did it and it's kind of worked out well and we've we've done okay with her uh but for the most part I try not to own a whole lot because it, it I don't have enough horses to kind of offset the cost of it for me right now um Sometimes on babies, I'll stay in for ten percent just to um, just to have fun with it, and uh, and if we get lucky and we win and sell them or whatever, then you you know you make out on the deal. What was it like working for Zito? <laughs> um, it was fun. It was stressful because I wasn't there during the good Zito, like win a lot of races, you know, running all the derbies. I was there. I started after dialed in, ran in the like after his three year old year. So when we were trying to get him back, I mean, we had Jackson Bend. Um, you know, we had some fun with it. We had some good horses, but we didn't have like a barn full of good horses. Um, he's 
he's tough to work for. He just expects a lot, but he's a great guy. Um, you know, he was at Oakland, you know, all winter, so I'd see him every day and we'd talk and, um, you know, we would, you know, pretty much talk every time I saw him and talk about racing, you know, he likes to bet the horses, you know, I bet the horses. So we always had some, we always had something to talk about, um, you know, but just a good dude overall. Um, but you know, it's just, he was kind of on the tail end of his hot streak. So I think it was just, he was a little stressed at that point. And he just kind of put a stress on everybody. Mm. What's the, what's the single, it's another question from the group. What's the single best training tip that you got from either Zito or Wesley Ward? From Wesley, tell your jock to good luck and go fast. Um, that's true. I mean, that's anytime I asked him for instructions, he would just tell him, good luck, go fast. And so, again, that's fine. Uh, Wesley was all just speed, you know, keep them all going forward. There was no, there was no slowdown with them. And that's fine. Um, that's kind of what I expected. Um, with Zito, I'd say what I learned with Zito was that not every, I think that's where I kind of learned every horse isn't the same. I mean, growing up, I knew that, but you kind of get into a rhythm of you start treating them like you, you get to where you're an assistant and you have 80 horses and you're just, you have a lot to get done. Um, and then you start to just treat them all a little less individually and uh, you don't get the good results. And then when you go back and you kind of pick horses that I'd say the horses we did the best with were the horses that got individual treatment. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. And, and how big was the Zito barn when you were there? I think at the most we had 80 horses at Saratoga, mm -hmm. um, which is a lot. I mean, that you don't have any downtime when you have 80 horses uh, and you're the assistant. You have downtime through the train and you have 80 horses because you make the assistant do everything. Um, so where, I mean, that's just, you know, we had a couple assistants and I had people that worked under me, so it worked out, but I mean, you spend a little, pretty much all day, every day at the track. So, but that's fine too. Do you, uh, another question from the group has come from Adam. What, do you have a particular favorite niche that feels, you know, that you feel best at that in, in example, coming off of a layoff, improving off of a claim, bringing a new horse up? Are there any particular niches where you think, you know, this is where I am really better than the average bear? I'd say I'm best off the layoff making a change. Or not off the, off the claim making a change. Uh, whether it's distance, surface, equipment, uh, riding style, whatever, what have you, speed. I, don't, I mean – Generally, if I'm claiming one, I'm claiming one with a theory in mind that I feel pretty strongly about. And it's usually some spin on a handicapping theory that I've dialed into training. Mm. So I'd say that's where I'm at. I think this is an interesting thing. I, you know, we loosely got about a half a dozen trainers in our, in our, in our group that we work with on a very regular basis. You um, are really the only one um, who is actually a handicapper as well. Do you think being a handicapper makes you a better trainer? And if so, why? I think it gives me a better idea of what I have placement wise. And I also think it helps me when it comes to the actual race because I can look at a race most of the time and know where I'm going to be. I might know I have a speed horse, but I can look at the race and say, okay, those three horses are faster than me. So I'm going to have to do, so we're going to have to do something different. And you'll hear it all the time. If you talk to enough trainers, Oh, I really like my horse today. Well, why? Oh, he's training great. Okay. Well, are you in the right race? Like, can you beat, the three favorites or is he just training well because he can train well and not be able to beat the horses that he's in against it doesn't you know that doesn't matter mm -hmm. um if you're in the wrong spot 
you know, now some horses, you know, they can retrain amazingly and they're going to outrun horses, but more often than not, you know, there are a lot of people that you would be surprised can't handicap and save their lives. Um, and it, I think it really, I think a good trainer is someone that can handicap and train. A good horseman is just a good, someone that can train horses. And I think that's the difference. Hmm. You, um, I know the answer to this because you and I spent enough time uh, looking at horses, but I'm going to uh, answer for you is, are there, or ask it for you anyway, is, are there trainers that no matter what, you will just never claim off of? And you don't have to name the trainer, it's not important, but are there trainers that no matter what the horse is, you won't touch them? Yeah, I mean, there are a handful that you just, the, the uh, risk isn't necessarily great enough you know doesn't really outweigh the reward um more often than not now whether it's the way they train or you know what you know just there's a few different reasons and you just avoid them because more often than not they're gonna make you look bad um at the end of the day so you just kind of avoid it and mm -hmm. move on mm -hmm. do you uh a, a question from clarence do you believe in the speed figure bounce theory uh i think I guess it to me it depends on from a training aspect how the horse came out of the race because I can have a horse run a big figure but if I see him train and he's training great then I'm not worried about it um, but if I see you know and that's the difference between just the paper and then seeing the horse with the paper uh, I mean I can I believe that horses that can run that run a big figure if they run back in two weeks, more than likely they're gonna not run that figure. That doesn't mean they can't win. It just means they won't, they probably won't repeat that figure. Uh, there was a horse at Oakland that I got out shook on and he ran, I think like an 88 buyer. And I, I don't really like buyers, but it's just kind of a quick one to point to. And then he ran back, he got claimed, ran back in like two and a half weeks, ran fifth. Um, came back five weeks later, he won going away. I mean, so I'd say he bounced, but I don't think every horse bounces. I just think it's, it's kind of, it's another thing. It's case by case. And when you have the horses and you see the horses, it's kind of easier to, to tell if they're going to bounce and you can kind of get a feel for your horses um, that need five or six weeks between races. And then you have horses that you can run every three weeks and you're going to get this, you know, you'll get, consistent effort sure uh question from laura and would you feel comfortable training a come from behind horse or adjusting your training style to the kind of horse even though you favor speed but the training horse your training horse that's a route or a longer race i mean is that absolutely yeah. yeah no i i one of my favorite horses that i ever had actually was just a complete come from last horse and uh he actually if you want to go back to the bounce theory, I ran him three times in 28 days and he won all three What's, races. What, which horse was that, Jason? Uh, Tonbo. Mm. This was, my, I, I had him my first year at Oakland, which was my, which would have been two years ago now. Well, three years ago now would have been my first year at Oakland. Um, and he ran at Ellis twice and then ran at Churchill and got claimed. And um, he was one, he, you know, he'd come back and make one run. And yeah, you have to adapt to those horses and that's, that's totally fine. Um, when I, and I don't claim horses just because their speed, um, had a horse parade field that we claimed. And, you know, when the day he wanted Oakland this year, he was, uh, he was last and came running. Uh, and I think those horses are fun. Those are actually my dad's favorite types of horses, um, which is completely, you know, he loves to bet those type of horses. He likes to train those type of horses. Whereas I just assume be in front and make them come get me. Um, but you know, you just, the best horses, you know, I just try to get the best value for what I can. If that's a closer, when I'm claiming and that's a closer. Is, you talked a little bit about, and I've heard many trainers and you mentioned this, many trainers say things like, boy, this horse is training really well. If you hear a, a trainer say that, um, or you say it yourself, what do you, what do you really mean when you say that? What, is, what does that mean to you? 
So me and I'm going to, I'm going to tout your horse a little bit. So be ready for that. Um, like Rosafa right now is training really well. And when I say that she is taking the rider instead of having to be asked to do her job. Um, she's pulling the rider. She's doing everything correctly. She looks great in the flesh. Um, she's hitting the ground, you know, perfectly with every stride. Um, you know, those are things to me that's training, training well. And then if you breeze a horse, which she didn't breeze between races, but, um, you know, you have horses that breeze and they are, you know, they're taking the rider and working, you know, you look at your watch and you're like, there's no way that's how fast they went because they didn't look like they were going that fast. Um, to me, that's training well. You know, when you work a horse and you're like, oh, that had to be like 49 and it was 47 and two. Um, you know, they're doing it effortlessly and they're just getting getting a lot without putting forth a lot of effort. That's a horse that's training well. So, so you mentioned Rosafa. We're in tomorrow. Um, yes. I, I'm going to put you on the spot. She's training well. Now you, you said the magic words. She's yes. 12 to 1 morning line. The handicapper in you, when you look at that race, how do you feel about Rosafa tomorrow as a handicapper? Put your training out of way. I think she can. I think she can win the race. I love the distance for, her, which is kind of why I opted for the twenty because we could have been aggressive and run her for ten, um, but the ten was going a mile and sixteenth. I like the mile because it's a one turn mile, which is, and I think. Deep down, I really think she's probably a one-run sprinter. Um, and with a one-turn mile, it basically plays like a long sprint, so she can just kind of sit back. And I don't think she'll be far off the lead because there's no speed in the race. Um, she'll probably be, you know, maybe a couple lengths off of it. And she can just kind of sit there and jam. I'm just going to tell James to kind of pick her up as he goes. Um, and then, you know, just be aggressive with her because she – She's one that needs kind of an aggressive ride, and um, that's kind of James' style. That's why we opted for him. Um, but, yeah, I think – I'd love the distance for her. Um, she's doing well. And um, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot in the race. I, have the, I think the fav, one of the favorites has not run in over a year. Uh, it's a turf horse. It was Brad or Brendan or somebody. Um, but, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't think there's a lot in there. I think those type of maiden races – you can get value because people will play trainers over horses. And I mean, her last race wasn't a bad race. It was first time going through turns on a very deep track um, against a horse that was really running well at Oakland for, um, you know, 30 and 25. So I think, I think we're going to run well. And, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get 12 to one. On here. Um, so, um, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you might just, you might get the discount. People probably discount her coming from Will Rogers um, yes. just because I think, you know, people, they just will discount her because of that. So you might get somewhere on that, but we'll see. Yeah. Well, it depends on how much I bet, I suppose. So um, the uh, <laughs> thing I got for you. Uh, so going in a different direction, uh, you've got uh, two other horses of ours right now. Um yep both of which we're entering tomorrow as well. Talk, well, yes. since I've got you, why don't you talk a little bit about the two of them as well? Okay. Um, well, I mean, I think probably everybody's pretty familiar with Trapped, uh, Trapped in my mind. Uh, she's doing, you know, she's doing really well. She worked um, the other day with Shelby, um, Shelby Honor, and, you know, she, she worked, she worked great. I mean, she's just doing it effort, effortlessly um, also. Uh, and when, you know, we're putting her in for 50, going seven, eight, she's kind of a closer. So she gets to make her run, gets a little more ground to, uh, pick them up and she can relax a little more than her races at Oakland. We kind of had to ask her to stay close because the track's playing a little of speed and, uh, you know, you don't, you kind of want to give them, you want to give them an opportunity, but you don't want to, you know, I think we probably took a little, little of her kick out of her by trying to keep her close down there. Um, but I think, you know, running third with her there was probably the best we were going to do regardless of how we rode her. Um, and then proudly, we've just been having trouble getting her in. Um, you know, she's she's training fine. We worked her in 50. I just let her work an easy, easy half the other day in 52. Um, I think she's a sprinter. We tried to get a little cute with her going long the first time. And she was sitting great around the turn. And she just got tired. And then, like I said, we just had trouble getting her in. So, um, hopefully – 
they both get in for Sunday and we can have a good day, have a good weekend. Yeah, no, that would be, would be super. What's your, what's your current plan after Churchill ends? What's, what, what, what are you going to do after that? So I'll stay in Kentucky. Um, I'll stay in Louisville and I'll ship around Ellis hopefully opens and we can run there. And then um, you can ship to Indiana. You can ship to Ohio. Like I was saying earlier, there's just a lot of options to ship around. Um, so hopefully we can kind of, you know, get the ball rolling. And, you know, if we get some wins, then you have some, you know, conditions to run through with these horses. And, you know, that's the good part about having three maidens is that you can spot them pretty aggressively and try to pick up some races pretty quickly. Yep. If you, um, if you, uh, once, uh, how long would you stay in Kentucky through the rest of the year? Is that the plan until Oaklawn opens back up? Yeah. Yeah. I'll stay, I'll stay here the rest of the year and, um, you know, we'll see what, like I said, what Churchill decides to do with Turfway. Um, if they, if they can get that ball rolling and uh, purses are good, I'll probably keep some up here in the winter, but then have, you know, the majority of them at Oakland, uh, similar to last year. And then uh, after Oakland next year, kind of make a plan and maybe split them up between a couple places. Um, but always have, always have a foothold in Kentucky. Um, but then, you know, be able to branch out from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, two more questions for you, unless, uh, unless we get more from the crowd that are on my list. If you, um, what's your, what's the dream for you? If I, if I give you a magic wand and say, Hey, Jason, this is what, this is what your training, um, business looks like, um, five, 10 years from now. What, what does, I, I, I give you the wand. What does that look like for you? I mean, I guess in five to 10 years. I'd say it's, it's kind of it'll be it's kind of a two-part answer. In five years, I hope to have as many horses as I can get, and then in ten years, I hope to be able to scale back to where I have, you know, better horses. Um, but I think, and I think most of the s- successful trainers have all taken the route of they get as many horses as they can, uh, no matter the, you know, quality, and then you'd have to dial it back from there. Um, and decide, you know, who, you know, what clients you can take and what clients, you know, you probably need to pass on um, for one reason or another. And the same goes with horses. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I I always want to be claiming horses because um, that's fun for me. But ideally, you know, you have some, some pretty big hitters uh, that can kind of carry the barn along the way. Yep. So – yeah, um, you didn't mention Keeneland. You, you, if if racing opens up at Keeneland, you'll 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 do you'll yeah. run there, right? Yeah, absolutely. No, we'll run. I mean, we'll stay in Kentucky and then ship around and race. So if Keeneland were to run, I know they're they're wanting to run a couple summer days. If they run, we'll run there and then we'll run there in the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, no, Keeneland's. I've got two wins at Keeneland. My first ever win was at Keeneland. So we'll just you know I have, I have a soft spot for that place. Yeah. Now, well, we're, we, we were expecting and uh, to have our first runners at Keeneland this year. So hopefully that still happens. So right. um, that's, uh, that's the goal. So um, I'm actually supposed to be in Lexington right now. Instead, I'm still in Hot Springs, Arkansas um, at this point. So that you can go to the casino. If you want. Yeah, I can go to the casino. That is true. So uh, uh, question, which do you, uh, do you go to any of the summer or fall training sales? Um, I went to the spring sales last year. I went to the March and April sales in Ocala. Um, I'll probably, I probably won't attend them this year, the uh, summer sales, but we'll be shopping them. Uh, one of the guys I work with, he'll be there um, shopping. I know you're going to be there or you're going to at least be looking at horses, maybe on a computer, but yeah. he'll be looking. Um, so. I haven't gone to like Timonium or any of those places. Uh, that's kind of the plan to branch out and get to those. And then we buy, you know, we'll buy from the uh, yearling sales. That's where I kind of my put my bread and butter there. And then we'll buy some of the, um, some of the racehorse sales, um, you know, when they have those pop up at Phasic and stuff like that. So, Gotcha. Gotcha. My, my, my last uh, quote, closing question um, 
Oh, uh, actually, let me ask you this question before I get to mine. Um, hmm. I'll, 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 let's see, make sure I ask. Uh, um, Dale Romans. Do you have any relationship with Dale Romans? Um, no, none. None. Yeah. I mean, just see him at the track, but don't really, don't really know him. Just, yep. you know, know who he is. Yep, no problem. So do you, do you adjust your, as a, I'm going to modify the question slightly from, from one of the, to make, have it probably make a little sense. Do you modify your day rates at all considering what the horse's status is? Um, I mean, most of my, so basically everyone that got in with me from the start is still at the day rate that they came in with. Um, you know, it's kind of a loyalty program, I guess you could call it. And then, and on those horses, I don't make as much because as I've grown and as the world goes, um, things cost more money. Um, so, you know, that's kind of, you know, they came in at that number, so they get to stay at that number. Uh, that's the fair way to do it as far as I'm concerned. And then, um, you know, I, I have a horse needs a specific thing um, like a supplement or a treatment or what have you, and that'll be billed separately. Um, and you'll, you know, you see that in the bill. I don't, I don't just raise everyone's day rate because three horses need something. Um, I just kind of specifically point it to each horse and, and, you know, it's pretty much broken down and my bills are pretty easy to read. So, um, yeah. you know, if anyone has a question, they can always, I always call and we can always talk about it and I can most of the time if it's something a horse needs you know the owner's going to know about it before they uh before they see the bill anyway and then um you know we'll just make a plan for there from there and as long as you know it's cost effective and worthwhile then we'll go that route yeah understood so last question for me and then we'll wrap it up for tonight and thanks for your time as always but uh if if um if you uh you know if you uh had the chance to own any horse in that you've ever put your eyes on and uh what horse would you own if uh, uh, and, and i'm not just talking about training but you literally get to own that horse which horse in the history of all the horses that you physically put eyes on would you own why is that why is that uh, i made a lot of money on him gambling uh <laughs> so that was just fun for me um yeah i mean every move i bet on him when he broke his maiden at turfway with john mckee and I bet on him when he won the Phoenix. Um, but my biggest score on him I ever made was uh, I walked into Churchill one day. I think I'd, I'd already graduated college. I wasn't currently working for anybody. It was $70. And uh, it was the day he won the Clark. And I walked out of there with $12,000. And uh, he was the big score on the day. I mean, he wasn't – it was a build to that point. but. You know, it it was all, you know, a big score basically wrapped around him. And, I mean, I got to meet him um, a few times. I'm friends with uh, Charlie LaPresti that trained him. So, you know, he'd always get to duck in and see him. And he's just kind of a cool horse. He's kind of – he's got a little attitude. But, I mean, he showed up every time. And, you know, that was – he was a – he'd be a fun horse to own. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, Jason, thanks. Thanks for your time tonight. And thanks for taking time from the family. Uh, I could, I could hear the Jason has a, a, a Jason and Shelby. You heard Shelby mentioned uh, Jason and Shelby. Uh, they not only work together, obviously, but they have a baby together. Um, and you could hear yes. the baby in the background every once in a while there. It's so. almost bedtime. I think they are they're <laughs> waiting on me. So we we'll probably go in there and take care of that now. That's great. All right. Well, thanks for your time today, Jason. And uh, we'll talk soon, buddy. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. See you.